Welcome to Tesla Info and today we're going to compare the Model Y to the Model X. This is especially relevant for some existing Model X owners who are looking to buy a new car as a new Model X is not an option at the moment in many countries. If however you are thinking of a brand new Model X then this video probably isn't for you as given the price difference you're buying into a different level. Although still stick around the comparison might be interesting. If you like our content please like, subscribe and ring that bell. First we're going to look at size. The MX may be the flagship here, its length and width are notice noticeably bigger than the Model Y, although the ground clearance is the same, at least when the Model X is at its normal setting. You can make the Model X ride go lower and quite a bit higher, but for getting in and out it's pretty much the same. There's slightly more headroom in the Model X, although neither are lacking really. Both have a high driving position, but what may surprise people is the Model X has a little less legroom. We think the bulk of the extra size in the Model X has gone towards storage in the Model X. The front is noticeably bigger, as is the trunk. For five people, we'd actually say the Model Y has the edge on legroom, but it's about seven centimetres narrow across the cabin for shoulder room. Both, though, are really well suited to carrying that sort of number of people. The Model Y rear seats fold easily, which can be done using just buttons in the trunk. They are also more practical as you can fold just the middle seat section if you want. The Model X seats are quite bulky in comparison and it's worth noting that there are quite a few different configuration op options available with the Model X, both 5, 6 and 7 seat options. And the ability to fold seats flat does vary by model and even when they were first made. Moving on to range, there's not a lot in it between a newish Model Y and a Model X from say 2020 or even a new one in those countries that can get it. If you're coming from an older Model X, especially the 60D, 70D or 90D, then you'll find the Model Y has usefully more range. The Model Y is also more efficient and in our hands we find in the Model X requires about one third more energy per mile than a Model Y. With rising electricity prices, that can be significant, as for every £20, dollars, euros, whatever you put into your car, when driving a Model X, the Model Y would only cost you 15 The second implication of the efficiency is charging speed. The Model Y has a peak rate of 250 kilowatts, and while in the US the Model X can shave pretty much those speeds, to add a given number of miles of range, it will take one third longer in time. The problem is even wider in Europe, where the Model X is limited to about 130 kilowatts. So in Europe, especially when using V3 superchargers, the time spent charging a Model Y will be significantly less than charging a Model X. Performance-wise, well, the Model Y isn't as quick as a Model X, but it's still pretty quick by most ordinary measures. And the long range with the performance boost would be very comparable to a Model X long range from 2020. Compared to the current Model X, the performance though is still off the money. Top speed is also down, but it's still comfortably faster than a lot of other EVs and how many drivers really go above 100 miles an hour on a regular basis. The driving dynamics are however quite different. The Model X seats are very supportive with good lateral support and the binnacle in front of the driver makes the whole dash area feel higher. While the cabin of both cars is quite open, the Model X does feel like you're more enclosed. The sound in both is dominated by tyre and wind noise. We feel you hear a lot more mechanical suspension noise over uneven surfaces with the Model Y, whereas the Model X has more of a dull thud over the same roads. The Model X feels just generally more solid, whereas the Model Y can feel a little skittish in comparison. The regenerative, regenerative braking on the Model Y is also much stronger, especially compared to the pre-Raven Model X. Tech-wise, used Model X will have a list of potential differences. The original MCU is quite slow, and we suspect the portrait format of that centre screen is not going to do well with future updates but we do miss the binnacle in the Model Y. There are also other small touches to the new Model Y, like wireless charging, which only the new Model X will have.
They both have towing packages. The Model Y can be retrofit, whereas most Model X cars will have it from the factory. Although if the car is an early model, it may come without and it cannot be retrofit. Both have the plastic wheel arch surrounds and both have rear-tinted glass, something which neither the older Model S or the Model 3 have from the factory. The Model Y now also has a parcel shelf, whereas the Model X has a false floor which can be set to different heights in the front. There are a number of general product developments that are on the Model Y that aren't on the older iteration of the Model X, like laminated glass and matrix headlights, whereas the Model X still has the party piece rear doors. The quality of materials also feels cheaper in the Model Y. Cabin materials like the headlining feel relatively cheap compared to the Model X. So in conclusion, if you're coming to the Model Y from an older Model X, you'll find the passenger space for four or five is on a par, although the luggage space is down. But running costs and charge speeds are a major step up. The Model X feels like a heavy, more solid car, the air suspension helping here, whereas the Model Y is lighter and feels more nimble, but at the loss of some refinement. If you love your existing Model X, it's probably not worth the change, unless some of the Model Y benefits make it worth doing. However, if you're in the market for either a new Model Y or a used Model X of around the same price, we'd probably suggest heading towards the new Model Y.